And thank you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yeshua. Today's Sabbath Zoom, welcome to Sabbath Refreshing Zoom. Today's Sabbath Zoom is called Receiving God's Promises in His Time. Hallelujah. Receiving God's Promises in His Time. The thing is, when a promise is made, we have to wait on the promiser to fulfill. Those who make promises to us, when we were younger and our parents promised us something, when our friends promised us something, when our spouses promises us something, whoever promises us something, we have to wait on them to fulfill the promise. Now, I know some folks get disappointed because people will promise things that they sometimes have no plans to fulfill, right? They're not going to fulfill it in any way, shape, or form, right? So, uh, and in that case, um, and we never know, sometimes folks make promises, they have all intention to fulfill it. However, situations and circumstances happen, and they may not be able to fulfill it. And that happens as well, right? And when that happens, um, we shouldn't be upset with the person right? We just simply have to be understanding. We need to ask God to give us an understanding heart. As I'm saying, today's promise, today's message, Sabbath, Sabbath refreshing Zoom is entitled Receiving God's Promises in His Time. And I was talking about that, saying that um, when the promises are made, when promises are made to us, whoever makes the promise to us, we have to simply wait on them to fulfill it. And, and that man, humanity, humankind, sometimes make false promises that they know they won't fulfill and that they can't fulfill. A lot of times, uh, this is the reason why um, humanity has become so um, disappointed, so disenchanted with, with elected officials, because many times the promises they make, many promises that are made, they know they can't fulfill it. Many, they don't intend to fulfill it, but we're grateful that God who promises, he will fulfill his promises in his time. Um, in Hebrew, there's a word, vayera, right? And it means, and he appeared. Now, what does this mean for us? And he appeared because Christ already came to earth. So what does, and he appeared when we're talking about promises? I know that we, um, we, we, we uh, in, many Christians will say, well, God appeared in time or he, he's always there at the right time. However, God is always with us because all of us are this side of the cross, right? Yeshua already went to the cross of Calvary and he already fulfilled the promise. So it's that he never leaves us, nor does he forsakes us, means that he is with us. So if he's with us, what does, and he appeared, Vayera, means to us, right? And so, and he appears means at the time of his manifested blessings. We see his truth come to life. We see his truth, his promises manifested. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, uh, praise the name of the Lord our God. We know that, as I said, he's with us. And you know, man, uh, reputation is for intensification. The more something is repeated, the more we get it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know what's happening. Uh, folks, come on and disappear. But anyway, God is a great God and a mighty God and a wonderful God. To him be all the glory. And so uh, <clears throat> the word of God tells us this. And I've always loved this portion of scripture. The things, thing is, when God makes us a promise, he watches over his word to come to pass. Now, God told jo uh, Abram, he gave him a promise. He told Abraham, I'm going to take care of your descendants. There's coming a time when things are going to get rough. Things are going to get tough, right? 
So look at this in Psalm 105, and I always love this scripture. Psalm 105 uh, verses 17 through 22 says, he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was for sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. The thing about this is, are you chained? Are you oppressed? Are you depressed? Are you distressed? Are you fettered with iron? Because there's a scripture that tells us that God himself will break the chains of brass into pieces and he will cut the gates of iron asunder. So if you're fettered, if you are bound by chains of oppression, chains of depression, chains of broken promises, if your parents, your grandparents, your spouse, your loved ones, co-workers, whoever have made you promises that your politicians that didn't, had no intent, the presidents, prime ministers, whoever they may be, leaders of nations, if they've made false promises that they had no intention to fulfill, no, and some have no way of even fulfilling the promises, know that it's okay. It's not okay what they're doing. By no means is it okay for one to take disadvantage of the disenfranchised, the poor, the broken, the neglected, the rejected. No, it's not okay. But when I say it is okay, I mean, trust God. He is our vindicator. He is your promise keeper. He is your problem solver. And he is the one that will break the chains that keep you, that are trying to keep you in bondage. You see, the word of God's promises made by him will be made manifest by God and God alone. No human efforts can cause God's promises to be fulfilled. See, when God makes a promise to us, you and I can't fulfill it. No president no leader, no ruler, no magician, no Satanist, no human, nobody, how pow however powerful they think they may be, none can fulfill the promises that God makes. The word of God tells us, hallelujah, glory to God. And so, he was made a ruler of his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. I pray today that for everyone who needs wisdom, everyone in a leadership position, whether it's in church, whatever the institution may be, whether it's the institution of education, the institution of health, the institution of government, the institution of the justice system, Whatever the institutions may be, the leaders, those who are in charge, those who are ruling. Because a lot of times folks like to believe, as Pastor was saying today, but I went to uh, uh, um, a Yes Queen uh, event that was uh, held by the Deputy Commissioner uh, um, Tanya Gonzalez. Uh, there were others who planned it. I think she, it, it was her vision to see it come to pass. And, you know, something that I've always said for years, and those who know me know that I've said this, our titles don't make us who we are at all. Our titles, titles are bestowed upon us to, to carry out. Right. And Pastor Pastor Alcock today, there's a great message he preached today. Um, it's on my page. If not, go to Christian Fellowship SDA um, on, on YouTube and, and you'll see it. Um, 
hopefully it's up. I pray it's up. I think we were a live stream. And so the thing is, we can't re just rely on titles. Titles does not make us who we are. But for many, the title is, is what many folks hide behind. They hide behind titles to do wrong, hide behind titles to, to make them be perceived as being something they're not. But guess what? God, our all-seeing, omnipotent, omniscient, all-knowing God, all-powerful God knows who we are behind every title, behind every veneer and every facade. He knows who we are and we could trust him to bring his promises to pass. None of us, not one person alive today can bring forth a promise of God. That's in God's hands alone. Now, besides the word Vayera, which means and he appeared, and I just said, said explain what that meant, we have Moadim. Now, Moadim is the, uh, the, the, the plural of Moed, which means God's appointed times and promises fulfilled. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I know, I don't know about you, but I'm grateful that I can look forward to Moadim, that God has an appointed time for his promises to be fulfilled. You see, the Moadim, they are special times that God has chosen. He himself has chosen them or he has appointed for a specific purpose. You see, in Ha, uh, remember, who remembers Abram and Sarai, uh, who became Abraham and Sarah after they were given the grace of God? Their names were changed and the, 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 the high was placed in their name. So they became Abraham and Sarah, but they were Abram and Sarai before. So, the thing is, God made them a promise that they would have a son, you see. And at that promise, Sarah's initial reaction was to laugh. Why? Because she was laughing because she had passed the age to give birth. She had passed the age. And she was like, she, she, she had never had any children before and she was past that childbearing age. So she laughed like really is. And, and when she laughed, here is God's response. You know, as I say this today, I, I say this in that, are you, um, I say this in that, are you looking forward? Has God promised something to you? Are you looking forward to, to seeing God's promises being fulfilled in your life? You could trust him because when Sarah laughed and wait a minute, can God really do this? Can he really like, are we really going to, am I going to give birth? How is this possible? I've never had a child and I'm past childbearing age. Or you may be saying, I've had children and past childbearing age, but I feel, or maybe God promised that you would have still have a child. God, when she left in Genesis 18 and 14, God, here's what he said. Is there, this is the Lord's response. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time at the Mohed next year and Sarah shall have a son. You see, in God's appointed time, whatever he promises, whatever he has promised you is going to come into being. Remember Mary, God an angel came to her and told her she would conceive without a man, but that the Ruach, Akadesh, 
the Holy Spirit of the living God, hallelujah, mm, shall come upon her. Um, and then he gave her instructions as to what name the child should have. And his name should be called Yeshua, hallelujah. Salvation, hallelujah, would come forth. Praise the name of the Lord, our God. And it took that nine months for salvation to come. There are appointed times and there are times when we know, and even, you know, I remembered when I was pregnant with my children and each one of them, well, first two came two weeks early, like under different circumstances, of course. Um, it was a like, oh, you know, two weeks, my water broke and here they come. No, it, there were different circumstances. My daughter, however, two days before her actual due date. But the thing is, when the time had come for them to come forth, come, come forth was what they were going to do. Hallelujah, glory to God. And so the thing is, while that may have seemed as an impossibility for Sarah, while that may have seemed an impossibility for Miriam or Mary, right? Plus, for Sarah, she'd never seen that happen before. For Miriam, she's never heard of that happening before or seen that. And there, hers is uniquely that way. Nothing, Luke 1 and 37 says, will be impossible with God. The God who makes promises know that nothing is impossible with him. Trust him. Believe him for your circumstance and situation. No matter what is happening in this nation or in whatever part of the world you are, whoever the leaders of your nations are, whether they're emirs or premiers or, uh, or, or kings or, or, or whoever, prime ministers, whoever the leaders of your countries are, if they're not ruling righteously, you can still trust God with your life, the life of your family. However, it all begins with self. And so the same way God who parted the Red Sea can make a way. That was another impossible situation for the children of Israel who were rescued. Remember, the word of God said he told them that they, he told Abraham that they, he was going to, his descendants were going to become slaves. But the day would come after 400 years or was it 470, after a number of centuries would come the time when God himself would deliver them. And he did. So when they came to the Red Sea and they couldn't cross and they didn't know, they had to believe. He opened up the way for them and he'll open up a way for you. You see, it's not in our schedule. It's in his time. Our job is to wait in hope, wait in faith, wait in expectation until the set time, until the mohed is right and he arrives. Omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent God. It's not that he wasn't there with you. It's not that he's not there with you. Yes, he is. However, the time that he has set for the manifestation of your blessing, the manifestation of your peace, the manifestation of your deliverance, the manifestation of you no longer being oppressed, depressed, distressed, sick, sad, and, and dejected or rejected, the, the right time, you see, is a set time. And so there may be promises that you have not yet received that the Lord himself made to you. 
And it seems impossible now. You're like, I'm older. I'm still not educated or I'm, I'm still unmarried or whatever the situation may be that you're going through. You may feel, oh, Lord, um, you know, it may be said that you'll get a house. And you're like, well, how am I supposed to get the house? I still don't have a job. I still don't have the funds. And, and everything seems impossible. Well, you know, he's got a, the impossible. He may say in this time, this is not the time for certain races of people. Well, I always say there's one race. So certain ethnicities of people. However, he's saying, stand still and see what I shall do. For I am God. And there is no power greater than the power of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I want you to stay encouraged by the words of the Yeshua in Mark chapter 9. Verse 23, he said this, hallelujah, glory to God. And I love it. Praise the name of the Lord, our God. He says, everything is possible for him or her who believes. Everything is possible for the child of God, for the person who believes. Everything is possible for him who believes. And, it, and that is true because sometimes we tend to, take scriptures that the Lord has said and we Christianize them. And we say, well, everything is just for Christians. But you you know that people who are not Christians are getting what they believe. Because believing is what, oh, did I do, oh, anyway. Oh, <laughs> uh, did I, I, I don't remember if I did this or not, but um, in talking about the things that manifest in our lives and what we truly believe, the Bible tells us out of the abundance of our heart, we speak and what, the, what we get is the things that we speak. So what we believe initially is what is piled in our hearts and it's what we're going to speak and it's what we're going to get. And so everything is possible for him who believes. You just need to believe the right thing. Believe God when he makes a promise to you. Believe him. Don't believe the enemy of your soul that causes you to doubt the truth of God. I find it so incredible. Well, I talk about that all the time. So let me just go on. So anyway, know that you see um, Abraham at the time was said to be 100 and his wife was in her 90s when, they, when she gave birth. And you could go to read this, right? In Genesis 21, you can read what happens there. Uh, okay, let me just read that for you. Hallelujah, glory to God. Praise the name of the Lord our God. We know that every time we read the word of God, we're blessed. And every time we hear it being read in our hearing, we're blessed. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. You see, when he named his son Isaac, it meant laughter. For Sarah said, God has brought me laughter. Hallelujah. And everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. Who would have said to that Sarah and Abraham would nurse children? Yet, I have borne him a son in my old age. Think about that. God has brought me laughter. When God promises to bring you laughter, whether no matter what age you are, no matter how old you are, no matter what's going on in your life and how sad you've been, and some people's lives have been very sad for decades. And then God says, I will bring you laughter. I will bring you joy at that said time. 
And, you know, I find some folks are very grateful and appreciative when they've gone through certain things in life, they become more appreciative and more grateful and more sensitive to others. There's still those who are selfish, but folks who've learned the lesson, no. And so, as Sarah said, God has brought me laughter and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. The thing is, some of those folks who laugh at her are now going to laugh with her, right? And so who would have said to Abraham and Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age and hers as well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so the thing is, uh, let us pray that we never nullify the promises of God in our own lives through unbelief. But may we be fully convinced that God will bring forth his promises, even those that seem unlikely and absurd in he, he will that he will bring it in his appointed time. The thing is, sometimes we share the things that God has promised us, the things, and sometimes God gives us a word, sons and daughters of God. He tells us something, but it's not for that time. So some of us are still waiting and say, but Lord, you said this to me 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 70 years ago. Some folks are still waiting. But know that it does not for God, a thousand years is as one day. So that he promised, and some of us are like, well, I'm now in my 50s, I'm in my 60s, you probably just, in God's eyes, it's just a couple of minutes, maybe two, five minutes, right? Or seconds even. So for him, wait, I made that promise. Now he can say, Danette, I made you that promise, girl. I'm coming through with it. You're here living on earth and saying, well, how? this is how old I am. And he's saying, Child, please. It's just been four seconds. It's just been five seconds or ten seconds or and here we are. We 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 you know and, and, and like this message is good for me too because there are times I I mean I look back and I say wait a minute I remember when the Lord said this and I'm like oh, oh this has been decades. No, it's been seconds in God's eyes. See, we're looking at it from our vantage point and never from the vantage point of God. And so we have to trust him to know that whatever he has promised us, our spouses, our children, he's there for us. And whatever he has for us, no man, woman, boy, or girl, no demon from hell or devil from hell can steal it. You know, I sometimes see videos and being raised in a certain culture, I realize, and you know, and this is an issue that I was, I was speaking to someone and I realized that sometimes many of us culturally, our cultures are seeped in fear. And so we grew up in fear. Our parents, grandparents, great, great, great it's just, it just filters down fear. And they want us to live fearfully, not they themselves, but the enemy of our souls through them because no one liberated them. And until we are liberated, we practice the same thing over and over. So we keep generations in a cycle. We keep generations going like this. But we have to know that God will never have us on a hamster wheel. Oh, the hamster wheel has got to go. Because we're going places. He takes us from glory to glory, not round and round and round the mountain or the mulberry bush or in the valley or in the desert for year after year after year after year after year after year after year. No. Or generation after generation after generation. No. That is a sin conscious mind that is oppressed 
that's an oppressive state of living. Because no, he wants us to thrive, to grow, to grow from glory to glory to glory. That means moving forward, going ahead, not around and around and around and around and heading nowhere, just making a ditch. Because if you walk around and around and around and around in a circle, you'll know the paths start getting worn. Eventually, if you don't get off that path, it's going to go down. Around and around in depression, around and around going down into darkness, around and around and around in poverty, that's only going down. But that's not what God has for us. And so let's take our trust out of the hands of man. Bible tells us the arms of flesh will fail us. As I said before, waiting on those who makes us promises. Mm -mm. Trust the only promise keeper who keeps his promise. And I'm not saying there aren't people who keep their, but there are many people who keep their promises. Many. However, we do know some folks that don't know how to keep promises, don't know how to tell truth. And unfortunately, we're living in such a world where so many are morally corrupt and so many are deceived that it's, it becomes difficult to discern truth from lies for some. But many eyes have been opened, praise the name of the Lord our God, and we can always trust God that in his appointed time that the Moadim, right, Vayera, his promises are going to appear. They are going without a shadow of a doubt. They're going to appear. That business that he wants you to start will be. We look at, I remember years ago when I was a little girl in elementary school, my teacher, one of my teacher, Miss Henry, I, I remember my teacher's name, Miss Henry, uh, ones who made really impression, <laughs> uh, Mrs. White, and Mrs. Nelson. Um, I remember them. Hey, Babette, you probably remember them too. And what I remembered um, Mrs. Henry had said, she said, you know, the way you write, and, and, and Mrs. White, she, she said it will come to pass. I remember her saying that. She had a son named Alex, one child. And... She said, you're going to become a writer. For years, I never remembered anything about that. For decades, I never remembered anything about that. Until the time came. And, and, and listen to me, sons and daughters of God. Do you think I'm joking about this? But hear me, hear me clearly. I'm not going to lie on God. And I, I, this is not by any means a joke. I can laugh now. When I was writing that first book, that was published because I wrote others. And I actually wrote more than one that year that when I was dying. The other one still isn't published as yet. Um, I don't know when it will be. It has its time. Its time is coming. I've, 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 I have a, a few books that are written that are not published as yet because it's not their time. But hear me and hear me clearly. When I was writing that book, the, the first one I published, I was dying. I would write, type, and fall asleep, wrapped up on my lap. And my kids would come, take it away, fold it, put it away. Sometimes, half the times, I was like just a little bit out of it. So I just didn't do anything then. But whenever he said write, I would write. And I would write for as long as he told me to write. And clearly, everything was clear. When I tell you there were no blockages, no blockages, no writer's block, no anything, no blockages, just write until I am, I can do it no longer because I'm exhausted. And when my book was published, I was in the hospital. I didn't even know that all oh, <laughs> I came out and got letters about letters and you know so forth and so on so many things happened the other thing is 
God supernaturally appointed me to a position that I wasn't even aware. I came out, saw the letter, and figured, oh well, that's passed because I, I wasn't no I, I wasn't there. Only when I called up, they said, oh yes, you are the such and such a person. He did that because he knew what he would accomplish through me. So I say this to say, trust the Mohed that God in his time will come through his words, manifested met, uh, promises will come to pass. They will manifest. They will show up. They will. Your business, your not-for-profit, your life, your marriage, your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, whatever it is that God has promised, no time, no space, no leader, no tornado, no flood, Nothing can stop God's promises from manifesting when the time is right. Trust him. His days aren't like ours. A thousand years is a day for the Lord. So we probably, some of us, many of us living in the nanosecond or seconds. <laughs> and we feel like, oh, it's been years. And we make it so burdensome. That's the other thing. We've got to start enjoying God, enjoying his love for us, his kindness. You know, pastor was preaching this morning and he said, if you're walking in a cane you, with a cane, you've got something to give thanks for. You're walking with a rollator, you've got something to give thanks for. You're walking, you're in a wheelchair, you've got something to give thanks for. There are people who can't get up, period. There are folks that cannot be moved out of their bed to be put in a wheelchair. The whole bed would probably have to be moved with them. So we do have things to be thankful for. Let's give God thanks. I remember when I was in rehab. I remember when I couldn't walk. I was lifted up with a Hoya lift to be placed in a wheelchair. Oh, I tell you, oh, Lakeisha girl, when this age, she said to me, she said, put your arms around me. I'm gonna put my arms around you. I will not let you fall. I heard the voice of Yeshua and I knew from then I was going to rise and walk. I, I never said, oh, I'm in a wheelchair. Oh, I never said, oh, I'm pushing a roll later. Oh, I never said, oh, you know, wherever I wanted to go, if that's my mode of transportation, I was like, well, praise God, I'm finally moving again. And when they saw me walking, they're like, oh, oh, well, now, you know, you're doing so well. We're going to teach you how to do steps again. And when I was laying in bed, I laid there trusting God. My life was in his hand. He made me some promises. I remember promises the Lord made to me when I was a little girl. Some came through while I was in my 20s. Some came through while I was in my 40s and along the way. <laughs> so trust him. You see, Romans, I close with this. Hallelujah, glory to God. I didn't even mean to give a testimony, but now it's part of the message. Hallelujah. So let me just say, amen, glory to God. Romans 4 verses 20 and 21 says, he, God, did not waver. No, he, Abraham, sorry, did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief. See, when God said, your wife, your barren wife, who never gave birth to a child before a day in her life, suddenly when it's past the time of childbearing years, will have a child? Bible said he never wavered at the promise of God through unbelief. And that takes faith in God. That takes confidence in God. That takes hope in God. That takes expectation 
in God, knowing that he who promises is faithful to fulfill and nobody and nothing else can bring his promises to pass except him. We've got to trust that. And so continue reading the word of God, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. You see, are you praising God? That, oh, right now I have no money, can't pay my rent, can't pay my light bill, can't pay anything. I'm not working or oh, things are bad. My marriage, things are just kind of screwing in my marriage, you know, but God bless my, have blessed my marriage. And he said, you know, or I have no children. And Lord has said, he's going to make my quiver full. He's going to make me laugh. My house will be filled with the laughter of little feet going pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter. And I'm like, listen. Just give glory to him that whatever he promised, oh, he's faithful to forget, to fulfill. Listen, you know what I used to do? This is, okay, after years of being in the unbelief and all that and the the, the negative, living with a negative mindset, um, when the Lord finally moved, removed the scales from my eyes, whenever he promises me something, I just say, well, just give me something to occupy my time in the meantime. And then I just go about doing that until the thing manifests itself because it is going to manifest itself. There comes a time when it will. I remember he said the second book is coming and praise God, nothing happened. You know, I just did it in the second and the third, the published ones that is, right? And, and when I did that, I think that was during, was that during the pandemic or whatever? And I remember the Lord said to me, I said, this year, this book is going out. Now I'd gotten a little bit busy because I asked them to occupy my time. So I, my time was occupied and I was doing other stuff and forgot. And he said, this, he said, the year would not end. Ask my daughter, <laughs> it was before midnight, I'm submitting to the publisher. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, that final copy was went in shortly before midnight. I was like, Lord, who? But the thing is, we have to learn to trust God. He says, he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he, God, had promised, hallelujah, glory to God, what he, God, had promised, he, God, was also able to perform. Let me ask you today, do you believe that whatever God has promised to you, he's able to perform in your life? I hope and trust that you do, because he actually is the only one who can do it. And just know that you might be here on earth for a good 40 years or 20 years or 30 years or you know the increments are there so i'm just doing the tens or so 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 even 90 even 100 and you're like there are some things who remembers caleb the bible says caleb remembered that God had promised him some stuff, right? It spoken through Moses. He's like, wait, wait, that, that part hasn't been fulfilled yet. He was 85 at the time. He said, I'm still like I was when I was 45 or 40, whatever the age was. He said, "Let give it to me. Let me go conquer it. Because if God said promised it, then he's going to do it through me. And he says, give it to me. And so, Joshua, go ahead, go ahead, Caleb. And what did Caleb do? Ah, with God on his side, we can do all things through he, God, who strengthens us. His son, Yeshua, who strengthens us, who is our salvation. And we've got his rock, a Kadesh within us. Come on, child of God. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. Anyway, to God be the glory. Just remember the Moadim. God, you will receive God's promise in his time. And he will appear. Fayera. Hallelujah.
Uh, I, I see. I don't know what's happening today. Folks, my husband just texted to say the link isn't working, but to God be the glory, great things he has done. And, you know, praise God. Amen.